One net top box, two net top boxes, three net top boxes. There's a fourth and a fifth and maybe a sixth one somewhere. They're Foxconn NT535, originally designed for Windows XP or Windows 7. These little puppies were used as a wireless system for a temporary data processing project. I grabbed them along with their associated cheap monitors, mice, and keyboards as they were all headed to the dump. They were mounted behind these cheap Acer monitors and ran a customized Linux Mint 17 operating system that booted off a USB stick. No internal storage was used. These bad boys run a dual-core, four-threaded Atom processor clocking at 1.7 GHz. With 2 gigs of memory, they ran as well as can be expected. Which is to say, not very well. It took five minutes to boot to this screen. And another five minutes to boot to this screen. These guys really don't like booting from a USB stick. These nettop devices were designed by Foxcom to be cheap, lightweight, small, and energy efficient. Although they can be upgraded to 4 gigs of RAM and will take a 2.5 inch drive, they're no powerhouses. Let's open them up and see what we can do to make things better. This sucker was hard to open up. I had to use a paint scraper to open it up. I inserted a spare SSD I had handy. The drive just slid right in. This SSD has a version of Xubuntu pre-installed. We'll see how it goes. And we'll need to pull out the motherboard and replace the BIOS battery. It took some gentle prying to pull the motherboard out. I started at the front first and was able to wiggle it free. And the pre-installed Xubuntu boots nicely. Even with an SSD, it's a little pokey. But let's see how it works with a spinning rust drive. And we're going old school and installing Debian. We'll use a handy USB stick to install the OS. It seems to take a really long time to boot from a USB drives. It defaulted to graphical install, but it hung. So we're doing it really old school. By using the Debian text installer. My first steady Linux distro was Debian, so it's familiar to me. If you haven't installed it this way before, just take your time and carefully read the installation screens. And we'll install a nice lightweight desktop, XFCE. And everything works. It latched onto my wireless network, and we're cruising the web. So let's try one of the cheapest SSDs available on Amazon and try Debian for Mint. And it hangs. Trying it in compatibility mode got farther after several minutes. Then it just hangs. Finally, I went back to pure Debian and decided to try to install the Cinnamon desktop. Yeah, no. The graphics chip couldn't handle it. It flickered, it faded, and finally crashed. No Cinnamon desktop for you. So I went back and installed XFCE. The desktop was a little weird as it sees two monitors, the actual monitor and a phantom laptop monitor. I adjusted it so the actual monitor was the primary one. This suggests the graphics chip was also used in cheap laptops. It's a little pokey, but YouTube plays back without stutter. I installed several lightweight desktops that seemed to work. I like LXQT the best, 
but it was a bit CPU intensive. So as long as you stay with Debian and a lightweight desktop, you'll be okay. Would I recommend buying this particular nettop box? Not really. The Atom processor and the lack of a decent graphics chip makes this a cranky puppy. Although Debian with a lightweight desktop works okay, you won't be doing much but basic office stuff, checking social media, and light web browsing. I got these for free, so I'm only out the cost of the BIOS batteries and cheap hard drives. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, or subscribe. I'm a tiny channel with no Patreon or sponsors, so any reply really makes my day. Be brave and dumpster dive. Mess around with unwanted hardware. And as always, stay curious.